Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to another episode of Old Engine Basics and to the second part of my section on oilers and oiling and lubrication methods. The next type of oilers we're going to be looking at are very similar to the drip oilers that I previously talked about with a couple minor differences. And this works pretty much the same to the other drip oilers. There's a little needle valve here that admits oil from the reservoir through the little drip tube and you could look through the sight glass here and see what's dripping down. The only thing that's different is the addition of this shutoff valve. This Powell Admiral one-third of a pint oiler also has the same operation. There's a needle valve, a sight glass for the drips, and then a shutoff valve that shuts off the drip inlet from the outlet. I did some research on these types of oilers and I found that these were used for ammonia compressors. I'm not really sure why they were common on ammonia compressors, but that's what they were for. Now here is the last kind of drip oiler that I'm going to tell you about. This one is the most complicated. It is a differential pressure oiler. And this particular type of oiler, this one is a Powell Boson, one quart oiler. These particular types of oilers are used on two-stroke oil field engines, the type with the enclosed back half of the cylinder that is used for uh, intake of the air and fuel and transfer of the air and fuel to the front of the cylinder for combustion. As a quick side note, you'll see that it's missing the handles. I have not restored this one yet, but if you go on a hobby website, you can get these wooden, I think they're like car wheels or train wheels or something. They're a perfect, almost perfect replica if you're not a woodworker like myself. You can see the general uh, layout of this. This is the reservoir. There's a sight glass to tell you the oil level. There's, you see this is the same as my other drip oilers. There's a little uh, metering valve. There's a sight glass. There's another valve, a shutoff valve here. And then down here is the threaded portion that threads into the cylinder. Now there's two check valves in here. This is just a needle valve. This is a needle valve. This is used for shut off. You don't need to throttle with this valve, but you do throttle the oil flow with this needle valve here. Then there's a check valve here and a check valve here. Now, it's difficult to explain just by pointing at things, so, I'll sh so let me show you something. A very helpful smokestack member sent me this and he gave me permission to replicate it and send it off to whoever wants it or needs it. His name is Andrew Mackey. Very helpful, very friendly guy. And if you happen to be watching Andrew, thank you again. Thank you very much for sending this to me. It was very kind and helpful of you. But let me uh, just show you each page here and you can pause the video if you like for your own reference. I can also send you a PDF version of this. Here's page two. Here's page three. And here's page four. Pause the video at any time to read this. So now that that's taken care of, let me point out some things in the cross section to you. Here's where the oiler attaches to the cylinder. Here's the shutoff valve. It is a needle valve, but you just use it as an open or closed shutoff valve. And there's a check valve. And this check valve only allows flow this way and not that way. And then that connects to a tube that extends all the way to the top of the oil reservoir. There's the sight glass. At the bottom of the oil reservoir, there's the outlet to the metering valve that meters the drip rate. And then there's another check valve after the drip sight glass. And this check valve prevents flow in this direction and allows flow in this direction. And then that tees into the inlet, or outlet rather. I made a simplified drawing 
that doesn't have all of the extra parts that were drawn in Andrew Mackey's drawing because you don't really need to see every little minute detail. This is the very basic operation of it. Now, uh, understanding how this oiler works requires understanding how a two-stroke oil field engine cycle works. If you don't understand that, uh, go and figure that out or I can make a video for you guys if enough of you request it. But anyway, this oiler is mounted on the intake side of the cylinder so this sees the oiler connection here to the cylinder this sees the vacuum and pressure associated with the intake side or the back side of the cylinder on a two-stroke oil field engine so let's start at the downstroke of the piston which would be the power stroke that means the fuel air mixture in the back of the cylinder of your engine is getting compressed therefore there's compressed fuel air mixture going into the oiler now as you see this check valve will lift the ball off the seat and it will allow pressure to go in here but it will not allow pressure to go in here which would prevent oil from pushing past this metering valve and blowing bubbles into the oil all it does is pressurize the air in the reservoir of the oiler and Andrew mentions you should not fill your oiler too high and it, because it will prevent it from working and that's because this air here is compressible and it's an accumulator it's squishy it stores pressure so the compressed fuel air mixture from the back of the cylinder travels up into the reservoir pressurizes this reservoir and the only way for that pressure to escape is out this outlet through the metering needle valve past the sight glass and then into this area here which would be the sight glass in the area directly below the sight glass now you see this check valve will allow this oil to flow down but currently with the piston on the downstroke there's pressure here so the pressure is keeping this check valve closed so there's just oil puddling up in here now at bottom dead center, or almost bottom dead center, the piston uncovers the transfer ports, the exhaust escapes the combustion side of the cylinder, and the fuel air mixture in the back of the cylinder transfers to the front of the cylinder, and that is a pressure drop. The compressed fuel air in the back of the cylinder is now expanding and traveling to the front. So now, the pressure here is less than the pressure in here. Again, a differential pressure oiler, that's how it works. Differential pressure between the outlet of the oiler and the reservoir. So now, since there's more pressure in here than over here, the pressure tries to force down here, but it can't go anywhere because that check valve is closed. The pressure is forcing that valve closed. So the only way for this pressure to relieve itself is out through here, past the needle valve. But this time, remember there's less pressure here now so this check valve will open and there's also pressure behind it it'll push that check valve open and push the oil down the outlet so that's how it gets some oil now the piston is traveling back up the cylinder now the intake side of the cylinder is under a vacuum now let's just say at the bottom of the stroke all the pressure equalizes so now the pressure here is atmospheric pressure 14.7 psi in reality it won't exactly be like that because you'd need a certain amount of time for that change to happen but anyway atmospheric pressure here the pistons traveling up in the cylinder creates a vacuum in the back of the cylinder again there's a vacuum here and atmospheric pressure here so there's greater pressure in here than here so it tries to push down this tube Nope, it can't go because the check valve is closed because there's more pressure here. Again, the only way for the pressure to relieve itself is through this metering valve. So the pressure forces the oil past the metering valve through the sight glass. Again, the check valve allows flow this direction, not this way, and there's more pressure up here than there is down here, so it'll force oil down and out. So both on the upstroke and downstroke of the piston, it's essentially pumping oil out of the oiler into the cylinder. Well everybody, that just about sums it up for part two of how lubrication works on old engine basics. Make sure to check back soon for 
part three. It will be the final part. I didn't know I had this much to talk about, so this video will be three, three sections total. So thank you for watching. Make sure to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, or leave a comment or a suggestion down below. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to receive a notification of uh, future videos. And thanks for watching, and as always, come on back for more.